and statutory reporting. I'm currently the Director of Digital Transformation at Mitura Data Science, the cloud-based solution for the Office of Finance and Supply Chain. Today's discussion is very interesting and is very timely. It's framed around cloud solution, uh, scaling up connectivity for future growth. It's an interesting topic that I feel is very relevant in today's situation uh, due to the current pandemic situation that has evolved and changed our daily working routine. This seems to be the new working norm, you know, working from home or some people call it remote working. But staying connected with your fellow co-workers are very essential to the operation and success of any organization like yours. Um, we are not talking about just staying connected via emails, uh, but today, financial application that we all use uh, need to be implemented in a matter of days or if not by months. Uh, no longer any of your organization can wait to implement all legacy software uh, which takes months or years to implement just to realize the benefits uh, of the business and its impact for you. So why, why is this a reality today? Um, the reality is Cloud-based applications are available. They are very mature. They have been going on for the last 10, 15 years. And they have become a fundamental tools for companies to stay connected and conduct their business as usual. Uh, joining me today are three distinguished speakers uh, who will share their knowledge, expertise and experience in evaluating complex cloud-based applications. They all come from very different domain, uh, but they have extensive knowledge in doing this embankment uh, onto cloud-based application. Um, we will then touch a little bit on integration of the current cloud-based and your various uh, existing um, application that you have in your environment. And then we will talk about the cloud technology itself uh, that is helping us in terms of a platform uh, to realize these benefits. Now, what is this important to you as an audience? Uh, what you will gain from this session, um, it will help you to guide in advising or recommending to your management on how to select a right cloud solution uh, that best suits your business environment for today and also for future. Why this is important uh, criteria on your selection, uh, any solution <coughs> to embark on has to be flexible, has the proper agility, it can be scalable, and it needs to be in a very secure environment. Uh, without taking too much time, let me introduce you to our three very distinguished panel panelists. Olivine Conley, Chief Customer Officer of Inflow Solution from Australia. Winston Lee, Founder CEO of Wavelet Solution Malaysia. Syed Rizwan Munawa, Practice Lead of Cloud Services, IBM Malaysia. Uh, let me give you a quick introduction about Olivine. So Olivine graduated with Masters in Accounting from National University of Ireland. She has 18 years of experience, began a career as an audit manager, and now she's the Chief Customer Officer at Info Limited Australia. As a professional Irish Chartered Accountant, she has overseen the delivery of largest global conference for accounting profession with almost 6,000 6, attendees in Sydney, established uh, technology startups in APEC, uh, connected a lot of Irish professionals to work in Australia, New Zealand, and she has also developed and grown businesses in Ireland. She's currently living and working in Australia and she speaks uh, five languages. Uh, welcome and thank you, Alwin, for joining us this morning. Uh, our next panelist, Mr. Winston Lee Hongfei, is a founder uh, and CEO of Wavelet Solution. Uh, he's been in this industry for the last two decades uh, prior to setting up his own startup company 20 years ago. Um, he used to work for DBS Bank in Singapore. Uh, a Malaysian JPA scholar, Vincent, graduated from University of Cambridge. 
uh, with first class honours and prior to that he studied at University of Manchester, also get graduated with first class honours. Uh, he then did a certification in blockchain technologies from MIT Sloan School of Management from Cambridge. Uh, he's been also awarded in 2015 the prestigious Epicta Award for Retail and Supply Chain uh, Solution, bringing blockchain and um, cloud computing. Um, our next panelist, uh, Said Rizwan from IBM Malaysia. Um, both of us were colleagues previous to this in Oracle Malaysia in 2010. And it's a pleasure for me and for him to be sitting in the same uh, panel session today. Rizwan, as is fondly known, has 25 years of experience and expertise in design, architecting, transformation and delivery of cloud-based application. He's technically very sound. Uh, he has done a lot of design architecting uh, on public and hybrid cloud, and uh, he'll share more of these details. So uh, Rizwan, good to meet you today. So let's start our panel session today, and um, uh, may I start with uh, Alwin from Inflow. Hi, Alwin. Hello, Ghana. Thank you, and thank you to MIA for having Inflow and inviting me to be involved. Um, it's a really interesting topic that we're facing today, cloud solutions and, and the opportunities that we see in our profession. As a chartered accountant, when I started my career, I remember the long hours that I spent in the office in audit season. Everything was manually input from a stack of papers into the Excel sheet. You had to hope that somebody knew how to run the macro or the pivot table so that you could get into the data effectively. And really, it was not a very effective way to work as a profession, I would recall. And I look today at the customers that we work with with Inflow across the world and how much easier technology has made things. Not just in terms of the numbers and being able to get to them, but how we're now able to work within our teams, within our businesses, across accounting firms to their end client teams, across boundaries and across borders. Um, it really is a very exciting time for our profession. Um, and I'm certainly very much looking forward to hearing the whole conversation today about the role that cloud is playing in continuing to drive us forward. So let me let me start with you, Alvin. Let me ask you a question. Uh, how do you find uh, Inflow uh, is fitting into the cloud application today? And where do you see uh, an opportunity uh, to position cloud-based platforming in your view? Yeah, as I said, you know, cloud is really very interesting, Ghana. You know, whether we kind of think about it or not, it's everywhere, right? You know, I'm sure many of you listening to this session today woke up this morning, you picked up your phone, you opened up your email, you opened up your work app, maybe you opened up your Xero or your banking. You've connected to many things in your life without actually having yet left your bed, or maybe you were sitting having your coffee when you did that. Um, and so it's it's really, it's all around us and it's providing us with great resources and capabilities to, to really do some great things. In terms of um, inflow and where we come in, I guess we're in the SaaS bucket. So software as a service is a method of software delivery that allows data to be accessed from any device, right. as long as you have an internet connection and a web browser. And so in this web-based model, businesses can purchase access to lots of different ways of accessing, storing, using that data and to carry out the services that you need to perform, whether you're an accounting firm, professional mm -hmm. accountant in business or in practice. And all of that information that you're working on creating and storing is served in one place in the cloud. From our point of view, we're a cloud native software as a solution service. So we've always been available on the cloud. And our mission is really quite simple. We're looking to transform the accounting profession by making innovative emerging technologies accessible to as many accounting practices in the world as we possibly can via the cloud. So we complete, provide a complete digital audit application for accounting firms wanting to deliver their technical services to their end customers via the cloud. Mm -hmm. That is performing their audit and other advisory work from any device with an internet connection, as I said, securely, compliantly and effectively. And so really, again, my question or my challenge, I guess, to those in the audience listening today, if you're a member in business sitting in a finance team, 
you've been thinking about technology and how it's going to enhance your finance team's role in the business. So why wouldn't your advisors do the same? Why wouldn't those people who you're entrusting to give you an opinion on your financial statement do the same? And so our view is to make sure that the professions in practice are continuing to um, innovate at the same pace that those accountants in business have been able to adopt for the last number of years. And, and that's where we come in. Interesting. Uh, Winston, uh, well, you, you've you been in, in, I mean, you started up uh, Waveland and uh, it's been running for 17, 18 years. Um, so I understand that you do a lot of integration work between cloud services and also the actual platform. So let me ask you or pose a question in terms of cloud integration and connectivity. What are some of the challenges that you see uh, when we are migrating on-premise uh, legacy solution onto the cloud? Hi, uh, good morning, Gana, and good morning uh, to all the audience. Uh, thank you, MIA, for having me today. Um, so uh, when we are talking about moving from on-premise uh, to the cloud, uh, the very first thing that uh, we need to, to know is that uh, whether you are just moving a uh, server that you hosted on-premise uh, server or are you uh, migrating, uh, uh, transforming the application from uh, on-premise server to a cloud-native uh, application like um, uh, what uh, Owen said just now. So uh, uh, when, when we are talking about Moving just a sub physical server to the cloud is very different from using a real SaaS-based application uh, because when you are moving to a real SaaS-based application, um, um, moving to the cloud is just the first step because, uh, I mean, uh, changing the underlying technology uh, uh, of uh, using uh, uh, on-premise or whether it's a Visual Basic Windows based or something to a web based is, mm -hmm. is, is just the change of the underlying technology. Of course, it gives you some uh, added benefits where you can access the data from uh, a mobile device or, or, or in a computer or anywhere, anytime, um, uh, as opposed to the on-premise application. But beyond that, there are actually a, a lot more things that uh, a business will need to uh, consider. Uh, for example, the moment in a SaaS-based application the next thing that they would need to consider is uh, how do I do the integration with the other systems that I have. Um, uh, it can be point of sales, it can be accounting software, it can be your ERP, your warehouse management, your logistics, your e-commerce, your contact system, your mobile apps, uh, the, your, your company's mobile apps for your customers to access. It can be your help desk, your time attendance, your uh, integration with the banks, recon reconciliation and many more. So. Um, as you probably already know, um, a, a lot of the uh, businesses are still thinking that the accounting software um, uh, is, is integrated with all the modules above uh, that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but, 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 uh, but because there are so many different applications and even for the HR, the payroll, you have different brand, different vendor, you know, and all, all those. So I, I would see that the, the biggest uh, uh, problem that the businesses face is actually not just uh, moving the application to the cloud, but uh, how they actually uh, need to make all the different applications uh, work together. And there's this technology in the cloud called the operational data lake that uh, um, uh, businesses can take advantage of so that they will be using the operational data lake as the integration platform rather than using the accounting or the ERP as the integration platform. Yeah. Cool, cool, Vincent. Uh, let me, uh, hi Rizwan, it's been some time, we, we, we have touched base, good to see you again. So, Thanks, you, you and I worked in Oracle before, uh, you are in IBM today, you are the practice lead uh, in cloud infrastructure and you do a lot of advisory in terms of uh, the basic infrastructure that all this application that Winston and Alvin is talking about. So, again, uh, onto the cloud, the adoption to the cloud. Um, what are some of the fundamental things that, that, that would impact and what are the circumstances that we can manage these impacts in terms of the platform itself? Thanks, Gana. It's a very uh, good question. And first of all, thanks to MIA and um, good morning or good afternoon everyone um, attending this event. So 
cloud has always been very close to my heart i have been working almost on it for a decade with the customers uh, around cloud adaption that how do they adapt the cloud or how do they start this journey so uh, even before all this public cloud and saas and these offerings i have been working with the customers in, in even in from their private cloud point of view that okay how do they go about it and how they started so i think and you rightly said about that in today's scenario where with all this pandemic pandemic uh, situation uh, everywhere around the world it has become even more crucial for us to do the adaptation towards cloud and organizations are looking more and more that how do they adapt the cloud in one way or other whether it is from a saas point of view or pass or ias point of view uh, but they need to start this journey and they need to wrap up quickly and what allen mentioned earlier uh, it's really about the agility and which is the topic today as well that okay how do we bring that agility in this cloud adaptation because now is not a time to wait and see so what i've been telling customers and one of the myth i'm trying to bust with the customers uh, from every walk of life is that many think that okay we have to go with one solution or ias or pass or how do we start this journey uh, by looking at that first we need to look at inside that what do we want to address and what are the challenges our organization is facing today what is most crucial for us to address immediately is it that do we want to bring some transformation within the organization to ensure that our current operations are running smoothly or is it more about attracting new customers or facilitating our customers or is it really about security or providing the operational efficiency to our uh, employees who are working from home so if even from an accountant's point of view is it like okay how do organizations make the systems available that the accountants are still working from home in a perfect way or is it about that how do we reach more customers and these are the factors which we need to look and consider about and based on that like what men's vincent also highlighted about that do i need to go for a lift and shift that we just look at transforming our applications which we have today and just do a lift and shift to those applications in the cloud or should we be looking at building cloud native applications from a long term point of view but do we have the time is the question we need to ask that can we afford in this situation and in this pandemic scenario that do we have the time to build those applications right from the scratch from adopting cloud native or should we be going for a saas based solution which can give us quick and easy way to adapt cloud today and these are the things which i work with the customers on a daily basis to understand what their business objectives are what their requirements are and how they can have a quick win today not tomorrow or in the future but today and giving them a complete roadmap and a path that should they be looking at retiring some of the applications or should they be looking at a lift and shift of those applications or developing a cloud native applications or adapting saas in simple matters so it really comes down to that first the organization needs to look at their own priorities and the challenges which they have and what are the areas which they need immediate focus to address and adapt cloud for that interesting a uh, good good view of uh, of the uh, adoption of uh, cloud uh, all the next question for you um, in terms of uh, i mean you you've been uh, uh, writing a lot of financial applications and all that uh, so one question that i would like to pose to you um, accountants and accounting firm uh, when they are looking at cloud what are the some of the criteria or the consideration that they need to do before they migrate into uh, the cloud framework yeah it, it it's really interesting and i would echo something that rizwan just said around you know it's about balancing finding the quick wins but also mm-hmm. recognizing that it is a journey you can certainly start to do things quickly in the cloud now and probably more effectively than you've been doing them but it's not an overnight success you you this takes time to bring your entire business into a new way of working um and i think the view that we would have around you know what if you're in an accounting practice in the audience listening in today or perhaps you're part of a finance team in a large organization what do you need to think about in moving towards cloud and the first thing i would say to you is that if you're not as flexible as the world around you then you're going to be subject to that world around you whereas if you can be as flexible as you can be and adaptive to that world you're going to control your destiny 
So your mindset needs to be in the right place before you even consider what technology you need. And before you start to write down those business objectives that Rizwan said you need to be clear about, I would encourage you to make sure that you're aligned to take this journey because it is going to be large. And it's not then just about the technology. You know, again, both Vincent and Rizwan have mentioned this. There, are, there is a lot of choice available in the market today, whether you're in business and you're looking for things to support your payroll or your timekeeping or your FPOS. And if you're in finance, there's hundreds of accounting and ERP systems available to you, many of which are now in the cloud. And so again, I would encourage you look beyond the technology when you consider this change and think more about, OK, I'm confident I'll find the right technology because there's such a choice out there. It will exist. But actually, what's the impact going to be on my people and my processes? Because if you don't consider balancing how your people are going to react to working differently or the fact that, you know, does this technology actually allow my people to engage with it effectively? Then it doesn't matter how good the technology is. Your people are just not going to embrace it and they won't use it. And on the process side, you know, if you don't understand the problem that you're trying to solve or the thing you're trying to make better, mm -hmm. again, the technology is just not really going to help you. You're going to have the people who are willing to do things better. Um, you're going to have the technology or the platform or, you know, in the cloud application that's going to help you do things better. But the processes aren't right and everyone's going to get frustrated in the middle. Right, right. So you need to think, we, we at Inflow, we call that the three Ps. So it's your people, your process and your platform. You know, if your people and your process are right and you've not found the right technology, it's not scalable. You'll get a quick win this week and you'll be back to zero next week. If your people are willing, your platform is good, but the processes just don't fit, everyone's frustrated. And we don't want frustrated people. They're our most valuable asset. And if you don't have people in the right mindset, but you do have your processes right and your platform, it will just get rejected and you'll be no better off. So our view in terms of the considerations for anybody in the audience today, whether you're in business or in practice, is the technology is there. I promise you it's there. But think about what you're trying to achieve longer term and more holistically with your people and your process, not just the cloud application and the other technologies that come with it. That's how you're going to succeed. Thanks, Lovin. Um, Winston, I think I'll pose this next question to you uh, because uh, you were the bridge between the legacy application and also you're migrating a lot of uh, application towards the cloud. Um, for the viewers um, or the audience today, there's so many applications and vendors uh, in the market today. Uh, what would be some relevant and important criteria uh, for them to make a choice on the technology adoption and also the solutions. Um, uh, okay, thank you, uh, Gana. So when we think about the, the evaluating the vendors and the application, uh, most of the time uh, from my 17 years experience is that the businesses, they are not able to specify, number one, they are not able to specify their requirements clearly. It means that uh, what they need, what they want, what problems they are trying to solve, uh, uh, how to quantify them. I think that, 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 that is the, uh, one, one of the biggest challenge. So when we don't, do not have the requirements clearly specified, we do not have a, a criteria to select the correct vendor. So, so um, uh, I, I would say that the requirement specification is, is one of the most important uh, part of uh, selecting the vendor. And uh, the next one is... Um, uh, when it comes to evaluating uh, software uh, that they need, um, uh, whether they have uh, uh, a complete uh, different section, for example, okay, evaluating the features and functions. And most of the businesses, sometimes they just see, oh, whether you have the report that I want or you don't have the report that I want, but creating a report is, is very easy. But uh, what is uh, more importantly is uh, actually not just looking at uh, a certain uh, features, uh, because features can be enhanced, can be customized, that is not a problem. But, okay. but, um, uh, but more of uh, looking at the security, the reliability, uh, the, whether it is uh, API ready, whether if, if, you, if you use a, a, a SaaS based application, some SaaS based application, they have very good feature, uh, very cost effective, but they do not have a good API. So mm -hmm. when it comes to integration, that will be a problem. So uh, I, 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 I will pause to the entire implementation. Yeah, yeah. We don't look into it, right? 
Yeah, and 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 also uh, as businesses grow, right? From from small, maybe they can use a standard application. But uh, uh, as they grow, whether it is easy to customize plug in or customize add uh, uh, modify uh, that application, if you need uh, um, uh, more features or functions, or or if you want to tweak a certain way the workflow is done, uh, whether the, the the software application will give you that uh, flexibility. So uh, those are the few uh, key criteria that I think uh, uh, is quite important for businesses to, to, to consider when they choose their applications. Thanks, thanks, Vincent. Um, I have some questions coming in from the audience. Um, okay, there's a, there's a few questions coming from audience. Uh, thank you, Aina, for this question. Um, and I think the best person that would be able to answer this would be Rizwan. Uh, this, Rizwan, this is a question from Aina. With cloud computing, since my data is not under my control, can I trust that the data will be secured? Again, it's a very good question, Aina. Thanks for asking this question. And because again, this is one topic I like to discuss a lot uh, with our customers. Because I, I would call it, it's a myth about that where cloud is not secure or if I want my data to be secure, I want to keep the privacy of my data, then I should not be moving to cloud. And when I started this cloud journey, uh, especially with the banking customers, FSI customers, financial services, yeah. uh, they every single CIO, CTO, CEO spoke to me about, okay, no, sorry, yeah, cloud is very good. I understand all the benefits of cloud adoption you are telling me, but it's not for us. And, they always say, uh, when I ask, okay, why is it not for you? If it is so good, why it's not for you? Uh, they always talk about security. So I always use uh, one example uh, to or tell a story in that way to address this thing. So you see, in your own organization, Aina, if you look at it in many organizations, and I've worked with three major cloud vendors with IBM, Microsoft, and Oracle, all three, and I've helped customers adapting the cloud. When you look at your own organizations, how many security experts do you have within your own organization? That is the question you need to ask. How much money or uh, investment your organization is doing to ensure that your current infrastructure, your current applications, and your current network is secure? Versus think of and imagine that how much investment and how much money these organizations spend, how many, how many staff they have. They have a huge team of security experts whose day in day out job is only to do one thing, ensure that the data which the customers has hosted, the applications which they have or the services they are providing are secure. There's a lot of ethical uh, uh, hacking as well, which is being performed. And as I said that I was an employee of uh, uh, Oracle and Microsoft as well and working on cloud and Oracle has so many cloud data centers around the world. And I was used to, to always wave my uh, badge, Oracle badge to tell in the conferences there. See, my badge allowed me the access to access, have an access to any single office within the globe of Oracle office. I can just tap my badge and go into any office. But the same badge, even I cannot use to enter into Oracle's data centers where the data is being hosted. Because it's not just the technology wise or the from a network security or infrastructure security, even the physical security is being taken very well care by these organizations. So you have to think of it in this way that are we really spending enough on that security of our own data and infrastructure versus the organizations? Because for them, it's a lot on credibility is also an issue. Right? The data is being lost or uh, hacked by somebody, then what kind of marketing <laughs> or PR nightmare it's going to be. And these organizations invest a lot of money to ensure uh, that the data of the customer is secure and nobody is able to access that data. So I would say, one of the reason I always have said that the customers do not want to adapt cloud is the security. Security should be the one of the very first reason for anybody to consider adapting cloud because the kind of security and the privacy the cloud providers can provide to your applications and to your data, it may be difficult to achieve that kind of level of security by yourself within your own organization. Thank you. Um, 
I have another question. This is actually from uh, Borneo, uh, Mr. Eric Lim. Uh, looking at the landscape of Malaysia, especially at the Borneo state, uh, IT infrastructure and telecommunication is a problem, and it will take years and huge investment. Uh, with these challenges, how does this fare for Malaysia? So, um, let me take this question and uh, give one part of the answer at least, and the other panelists can jump in as well. Uh, so, see, this is another question, and I see, and uh, because I've worked across uh, Asian countries and where the infrastructure or even the telecommunication or network has been an issue, and many customers have said many times to me that, okay, yes, uh, the cloud is all good, and even if you buy the story about the security, but our network does not allow us to be connected throughout 24 by 7 and how do we address these kind of challenges so see there are two parts of uh, your question eric uh, one is about that network connectivity which becomes a problem from adapting the cloud and the second part you mentioned about from an infrastructure point of view which actually is the leading reason for you to adapt cloud that yes as an organization and especially if you look at it from a small and medium businesses point of view um, nobody can afford to spend millions of dollars to establish a proper uh, data centers and then have DC4 level kind of certification and infrastructure in place versus it is much easier to enjoy that kind of infrastructure availability and capability and scalability through the cloud providers because I can go with on-demand computing so I don't need to make upfront investment and do these things. But that leads to the second problem as well that what do I do about the network connectivity? And that's where the cloud has become a lot more advanced as well. We are talking about disconnected applications and like what Olin also mentioned earlier. And there are many solutions about which Vincent also highlighted that how do I have disconnected applications where we are still leveraging on the cloud-based solutions, but in a disconnected model. Another very important aspect is where I've seen vendors really working hard is providing what they call cloud at customer. Uh, if you look at Oracle has offerings around cloud at customers that how do they bring their own public cloud infrastructure and services to your own premises. Uh, Microsoft also has the similar solution through Azure Stack, which they call it. Dell is providing the similar kind of solution in the partnership with the, uh, Microsoft. And so is the other cloud vendors. So they are looking at that how to ensure that their services are available. And for these vendors I've highlighted, I know and I've worked with many customers to provide this cloud at customer kind of uh, public cloud services, mm -hmm. which is pretty much, if not 100%, you can say almost 80 to 90% same as their public cloud offering with the same kind of scalability, agility, and security in mind, but in your own premises, which addresses this uh, network problem. So there are two ways, as I said, one is this cloud at customer, and second is through the disconnected application deployment models, which can also help uh, you with that network connectivity issue. Okay, uh, thank you, Rizwan. Um, next question is from Inche Nahar Sadan. Uh, dear panelists, by embedding cloud-based technology, there are usually difficulties in integration issues uh, mainly dealing with legacy system. Any opinion on or strategy on future plan? I think, uh, Winston, you could answer this question. And I think, Alvin, you could also add the SaaS-related uh, uh, answers to this question. Winston? Right. Thank you, Ghana. Uh, and thank you, Nahar, for the, for the questions. Um, I think when it comes to uh, integration, the first thing that we think about is... Uh, connected and centralized to be transactional, to be operational. That means that uh, uh, if, if these data that are connected to a, op, an operational data lake is transactional, they can actually build an API surrounding the, that data and uh, to allow new applications to be uh, plugged in and uh, uh, carry out transactions while maintaining the old systems. So, so um, uh, 
when it comes to uh, ensuring the smooth, ongoing, continuous operations while adopting the new uh, SaaS-based application, um, uh, I, I understand it is very tricky because a lot of businesses will be stuck like, oh, oh my God, I, my existing system is so complicated. How do I then actually uh, get to enjoy the cloud? But if I use the cloud, uh, so many connections will be broken. So how do I handle that? Uh, that is uh, actually what I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Owen? <laughs> yeah. You make it sound so easy, Vincent. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look, it's a, it's a really good question and thank you for it. I, I think, again, we, we come at it from a slightly different angle only because currently there are no, or there's very few technology driven audit applications in the world. So when we deal with the integration and the legacy system, we're really operating from a good space because there is no legacy. You've never done yeah. your audit on a tech-based platform. Yes, there are some available, don't get me wrong, but very few use emerging technology in the way that we do. There's certainly no other applications that I've seen that deploy AI, machine learning the way that we do. And so we, we come at this question from a slightly different point of view. And what my response to you, Nahar, would be, the vendor who you're working with to integrate this new tech should have the right support mechanisms in place to ensure that transition. So once you have somebody fantastic like Vincent who makes sure all the technical specs are linked and your ABCDs into the data lake are all set up effectively, I would be encouraging you to make sure that your vendor who is you know, helping you bring this new technology on board is training you, is supporting you, is taking you through a program of your staff learning how to use this application, what the current processes look like in your existing business and how you stand that up to the new way of doing it. And so, for example, at Inflow, the biggest team in my division is my support team who are there on hand to make sure our customers can use our application you know, at all times of the day. And I think without that support, technology is very intuitive and it's great, but there's a lot of thinking that you have to put in to get it right. And so I think it's it's balancing what Vincent said about getting the technical specs aligned and making sure that you have the right support to deploy that technology as intended. Otherwise you go wrong and it's like learning to drive the wrong way and you'll go backwards. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question. Uh, this is quite relevant in, uh, in Malaysia because of the cloud adoption, but there is, um, the question is, there are too many cloud service providers in the market. Very confusing. Uh, what is the easiest way criteria for a layman to choose? Um, I, I, I'll, I'll leave this to the, to the panelists because uh, everybody has a, has a view on this. Um, yeah, anyone want to take, yeah, Olivine? Uh, look, the one thing I would encourage, and, and this comes again from the work that we do with professional accounting bodies in the world is, you should be reaching out to the MIA um, because they have a huge amount of resources available to support you as their member in understanding what these technologies like cloud mean for you. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly our experience across the globe is that the accounting bodies are trying to make sure that they have information to support your decisions. They won't make the decision for you, but I'd encourage you at, the, at, at least in the first step, look to your accounting body to see what support they can give you around making that decision. Uh, I, I have something to add. I think uh, one of the things that uh, uh, if you are looking for a software, it's quite important to ask the vendor what uh, they have already done for their previous customer so that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, some, some stories, some examples, some use cases, but uh, not just looking at the features and the function. So uh, how, how they solve a certain problem is uh, equally, if not more important than the features and functions available in the software. Yeah. Reason? Yeah, so I, I like to what uh, Vincent and Alvin have said from another aspect is that this is another question which have been asked many times. And even when I was working with the, our particular cloud provider, right, my answer remains the same. That one myth I like to bust as well is about that one cloud can serve you for your complete solution, right? Or serve you best from in every way. So no matter whatever we are doing, we just have to first pick and choose one single cloud provider. And that is the cloud provider we're going to stick with. 
that was the case few years back when this whole public cloud and cloud journey for the customers has started but today many of the customers i have worked with they understand and they always tell them the same thing that okay there is no one single cloud provider to address yes. all your needs you have to look at it that what is your problem or what is your requirement and which cloud provider can give you the best solution for that and then you may end up having two or three yes i'm not talking about that you should have 10 different cloud providers within your organization because that will also become a nightmare but at least you need to keep in mind that it's not going to be a single one as well that okay i have decided on oracle so now for everything i'll go oracle or i'll go azure or i'll go aws no you may have uh, for uh, i've seen many customers that for data